Good evening, boys and girls, and apologies for the slight delay. We are not having a very good day technically, but welcome to episode 126 of Love at First Sent with me, Persilaise, coming to you live from YouTube and a special live interview episode today with a very, very special, very interesting perfumer. Um, a, a few more words about the uh, technology. Um, I, I don't know what's been happening today, but I've had very, very serious internet issues over here in the south of England at Maison Pertelais. At the moment, the internet this end is fine, but my guest, who I'm going to introduce you to in a moment, has also had major issues with her Wi-Fi in her office, her Wi-Fi which normally works fine, and so she's had to make last minute changes and go on a phone rather than on her computer, uh, which, is, which is why we're a little bit late. So thank you very much for your patience. So as ever, send special thoughts and special wishes to the south of England for a strong internet connection, but also to the heart of Paris, because today I am taking you, or I'm, we're all going to the offices at, of uh, Givaudan in Paris, because our guest today is the perfumer Sonia Constant. Now, she, she is a very, very interesting figure uh, to talk to and to listen to for a number of reasons, but I guess, uh, to give her a very brief, uh, brief biography, the thing that makes her particularly interesting in the context of the interview today is that she is a Givaudan perfumer, so she makes perfumes for lots of other brands. She's made, she's actually made perfumes for probably almost every single brand that you can imagine, but she can't always talk about those, but she's made perfumes for Narciso Rodriguez, for Thierry Mugler, for Armani, but most recently for Calvin Klein, but she has also created her own brand, the brand Ella K, or Ella K, you can see here their logo and their name, and that makes her quite unusual. And so I suppose, I'm, I'm sure that's going to be one of the things that we're going to be talking about, how she balances this business of being a Givaudan perfumer, making perfumes for other brands, but also creating for her own brand. So lots and lots to talk about. We may get to talk about the fact that her teachers were none other than Dominique Opio and Francis Cochillon. So lots and lots of things to explore, but for now, Welcome to uh, the Persele studio, Sonia Consto. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Darius. Hello, hello, everybody. I'm very happy to be here tonight to talk about perfume and to talk about my own brand, Ella Kate. Um, I have to say, you're, you're, you're worried about your image, you're worried about the sound. As far as I can tell here, everything looks great, everything sounds great, and I know lots and lots of people are watching. We've already got um, some people watching if you if you're leaving a comment by the way if you're watching I've, like i've always said it's really really nice if you tell us where in the world you are i know sometimes you may not want to divulge that information but if you tell us where you are it makes it even more exciting so uh pragueza is saying chest laura here eric says how exciting uh rich mitch is watching saying hello again and watermelon antique says hello from bosnia herzegovina i hope the wi-fi doesn't let us down yeah absolutely um, Pema is watching from South Korea. It's 1 a.m., but I'm still awake for this. I love her creation. So you've got a fan here in South Korea. Uh, Peggy is saying hello from London. Uh, Super, Super Baby One says hello from Romania. Mohammed is in Ireland. Miguel is watching from Spain. We've got a tune going on in <laughs> Sonia's office. Rich is in Newcastle. Okay. In the usual way, if you've got questions for Sonia, just hang on to them for the moment. I will tell you when we get to the bit of the broadcast where I'll take questions from you, but I'm sure you will have lots of questions. My first question to you, Sonia, is we'll talk about the brand Ella Ka in more detail in a few moments, but a lot of people may be aware that it is a brand that is very, very heavily based on travel. It's almost completely inspired by traveling, actually. So. Before the world went crazy and before we had to completely change our way of life, what was the last country that you visited? Oh, I, I was in uh, Norway and in Oslo, yeah, and to see, we um, were in, in the north in Norway and to see the, the, oh, the, 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 the northern lights? Yeah, the northern lights. And the northern lights. And we were with the dog as well, and there was some, it was very icy, and there was some very special odor of ice, uh, water, it was very interesting too. So I think I will have, I will, I will do a fragrance around this country. And, a Norway fragrance? Yeah, maybe, maybe, for, more for men, I, I think. 
lot of inspiration. But uh, yeah, you... before that was Africa in Botswana. And so this gave birth to two fragrances, Replay Solo Gabango um, and Lucre du Calari. I have to ask you, how does a perfumer describe the smell of ice? Mm, it's, it's a bit ozonic. Uh, we have some ingredients like floral ozone, chlorhydral, um, tropional, which gives this impression in the perfumery palette. It's difficult to explain. Um, it's transparent, it's aqueous. Um, of course, water doesn't smell anything, but when it's icy, it's a bit like fishy, uh, a little bit, but in a good way, you know, like a very fresh, fresh fish. And this is this kind of, of odor, but more because ozonic also. To, to me, I don't know if you would agree, but to me, there's something about cold temperatures, yeah. which is actually about an absence of smell because it's more, it's more difficult to smell when it's cold, right? Yeah, it's correct, completely correct. Um, you, you, and also because where's place where it's very cold, you don't have so many trees, flower, fruits which are growing. So there is less to smell, of course, but also when it's cold, you smell less. You, you smell more when it's, it's warm also because when it's warm, the water evaporates and so it brings together all the um, uh, odorant molecule, and so you, you smell better. I think this is a, the explanation. Yeah, that's fascinating. Okay, so tell us about Ella Ka. Who is Ella Ka? Is she a real person? Is she a, a made up character? Why, why Ella Ka for a brand? Yeah, she's a kind of heroine. Ella Ka, the name of the brand. So Ella is coming from Ella Maya. She was a traveler, she was Swiss. But she was also a photographer, a writer. She was an amazing woman because she was traveled at a time where women were supposed to stay at home wearing the apron string. So I was completely fascinated by this woman, but not only her, you know, all the women who did exceptional things, who believe in their dream and give a chance to their dream to, to, to come up, to come up. So Ella is coming from Ella Maya. The care is more personal. It's both dedicated to Ella Maya because her little name was Kini. Sorry, sorry, I'm in So her little name was Kini, but K is referring also to my grandfather, Kuchera, he was Czech. Um, and my grandfather was working for Bata, for, for Kauchu. <laughs> and so he was traveling a lot. And he told me every time I visited him, he was telling me all this story of about Africa, about the jingle, and it was absolutely amazing. So it's also a tribute to my grandfather because he take care of me, and also he was a very nice person. And yeah, so it's both meaning, but care for Kini, the little name of Ella Maya, and um, also my grandfather who is. Um, no, so, so who, whose idea was it to start a brand? I mean, you know, you're a, you're a successful uh, Givaudan perfumer. Why, why, why do you want to start a brand? After a few years, actually, I had in mind um, to create my brands, I think, since the beginning. Because when I started perfumery, in the, in the niche fragrance, there was only Serge Rutens uh, and Gautal, and it was the beginning of Frédéric Mal. And I remember when I visiting the perfumery, I stayed so much time, this kind of perfumery and, and this, the niche perfume make me dream, make me travel. You just have to close the eyes and I, I, I was leaving. Because I like when things are not too much uh, refined, you know, and when it's, 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 the, it's telling things. And so I had in mind this, but I wanted to prove myself that I was able to create good fragrance so uh, I, I went to have some to uh, to create some okay big fragrances to have some price to start my my own brand so for me it was a proof um i could do my my own business as well so when you say that those sorts of perfumes like lutans and mal made you dream made you travel do you mean to say that the mainstream perfumes didn't have that effect on you 
<laughs> no, sure, of course, I like both. It's, it's really two kind of works, but um, I like the over the edge. I, I like when things are a bit more crazy. I like when it's imperfect and um, with the lacquer, I, I try not to, to, to please to everybody. You know, it's a very more personal approach. It's more, I mean, it's more art artistic kind of approach of the perfume. And it's also because it's about my traveling, it's about my life. So it's more about a philosophical point of view on, on the life. And so I, I also have things to say through my poetry. So behind each fragrance, there is a, a very special story, which is something I already did. I already have been to this place, visiting this place. Um, I saw this flower or this woods or these plants I described into the fragrance. I collected myself with my little headspace and the poetry. Yeah, I, I want to talk about that in a moment. Yes, yeah, go yeah. on. But no, it's not, there is no, it's, it's a different perfumery. And I absolutely love both perfumery. But with my brand, I wanted to do something more personal. It's more personal. Okay. I will bring up a few comments as and when they come up. But uh, Verena says, Ella Capa and Parfum are amazing. Thank, Thank you very you. much. <laughs> so you. there you go. Um, tell us about the headspace, because I know that every single one of your perfumes is very, very, very strongly based on a specific location. But, but as I'm sure you know, there are lots of brands that are inspired by travel. There are lots of brands that are inspired by famous cities, famous places, famous locations, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah. But your unique thing is that you very explicitly make use of headspace technology. So for the benefit of people watching who don't know what that is, can you first of all just give us a brief explanation of what we mean by headspace technology? Sure, so space technology is a Givenon technology, so it's a kind of machine I can bring um, in, in tr during my travels, because there is, a, there is different kind of machine, but there is a small one, a very small one, so I can bring it in my backpack. And so the principle is um, when you meet a flower, a wood, or a tree, everything that smells, you can put it in a glass. And there is a system that of aspiration. It's two tubes you put into the glass, and so you close around the flower, if it's a flower, for example. And then for two hours, you do the aspiration, and the, all the odorant molecule of the flower is going in the tube, and it's going to go in a little filter. And this filter, after two hours, will be full of, of the molecule, odorant molecule. And then I can send this filter to my lab and they will analyze the filter. And I can have back, in a way, the formula of the flower, what the flower diffuses, the ingredients the flower diffuses. And then with natural product, I can reconstitute the smell of all I, I, I meet during my travel. So for me, it's absolutely a fascinating uh, technology. I find it when I discovered that, when I arrived at Givenon, it was really, wow, it's, it's, it's amazing. Because, so, you can, it, trap, be... you can trap every smell. So it's an unless, you know, curious, uh, unless... Um, 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 it, would, it be, would it be correct almost to describe it like a kind of microphone of smells? You were like yeah, exactly. recording the smells. Exactly. Yeah, or a Shazam, <laughs> Shazam for music. Exactly. Yes. Mm. So how... How, how, how correct is it? How reliable is it? So, for example, if you go to, I don't know, you go to Japan and you do the headspace of some really, really interesting Japanese incense or something like that, and you take it back to your lab, does it really, really get it like 100% correct? No, no because some um, ingredients in the nature we don't have in the perfumery palette. You know, it's like we don't have um, all the in, the molecule, the little Lego, which is in the natural. So sometimes I miss the odor. So I start with the base and then with my nose, I compare to my memory, to the smell of my memory. And then my memory plays also in the reconstitution of the fragrance. The reconstitution is, is done actually not by me, but, but by somebody in the analysis department. It's another analysis, another department of Givaudan. And then I do myself the, the more olfactory approach. And so I feel the gap that 
can be here. But you're completely right. Uh, the, the first formula that is given to me is not complete. For example, for the spider lily in the Brume de Caosuk, in the Elaka Parfum Brume de Caosuk, so there was a, the smell of spider lily, but when I reconstitute, I miss the natural, the very solar bloom of the spider lily, and then I use the, the, the least elan. It's a raw material, it's an island island, but we remove all the top note, which are a bit animalic. So it smells more like a lease, actually. And so I use, it's like a fraction of um, Ilong Ilong, and I use only th this fraction that gives the smell of the spider lily. So Brum de Kaosuk is a high amount of this um, lease Ilong um, ingredient. Right. One. So, so the head the head the headspace technology is amazing and it's very clever and it's very useful. But actually, if you don't come with your experience as a perfumer yeah. who knows about raw materials, then it 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 can only it can't take you the full way <laughs> to, to making a yeah, formula. I often had uh, in on Instagram people who say, "Ah, oh, I want where can I buy this machine? It's exceptional." First, we cannot buy because it's a Givenon technology, so it's only for Givenon perfumer. And, and, and second, even if it would be, <laughs> they could buy it, they really need a strong uh, training in perfumery and in analysis also. So it's not for everybody, it's really for experts. And every single one of your perfumes in the Elaka Connect collection yeah. has in some way something yeah. connected to some headspace reading that you did mm -hmm. in the location. Okay. Taste really the base. And, but then um, in the Elakia fragrance, I don't want only to reconstitute one smell because it's really, I, I love the phrase from poet Baudelaire uh, in Fleur du Mal when he says sounds, uh, color, and odor respond to each other. And it was exactly that in Elakia. So there is the odor I, I, I met, like a flower, a wood, and everything that smell, but it's also an atmosphere. It can be uh, the humidity you can feel on your skin, it can be the dryness of, of uh, the air uh, in, in Namibia, or in, in Africa in general, in Prissur Alum, it's really the humidity I wanted to translate into the fragrance. So there is this, it's, there is also the color, and also we can find it in the, in the juice because all the, the, the fragrance have this color of, of the, of the uh, the landscape I wanted to translate. So it's really a synesthesia. It's not only a reconstitution of a smell I met. It's nice. more than that. It's more an, an artistic approach of, of synesthesia. I have to ask you um, about the, 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 the protocol, the rules, the etiquette of, of being a Givaudan perfumer, but also starting your own brand. So when you had the idea how did Givaudan react? Did Givaudan, for example, say, no way, you're a Givaudan perfumer, no, you can't make a brand? How does it work? How does all that work? No, it was very great. Uh, it's a fascinating company because they let me do that. And re I'm really thankful to them to let me uh, create uh, my own brand and, and have the possibility to continue to create for other brands that I really love. I absolutely love my clients as a brand for who I'm, I'm working for. Um, but it's a it's a different approach, you know. It's so if you compare to couturier um, designer, and uh, you can see like Alexander McQueen, he, 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 he was working for Celine, and he have uh, his own brand, and his own brand was a bit more crazy. And um, but good, both was very good job. It's it's a different approach. It's. Um, I think when you yes. arrive at a, I'm 42, <laughs> and you want to express yourself more deeply in what you are doing, but not only into the fragrance, but it's only in the name I choose, uh, in the poetry I wanted to translate. There is all those love poems that Elaka is writing for her lover. It's really like a second meaning of the, of the fragrance. You smell the fragrance and you have the poetry. And yes, there is a second meaning. So. All of this is completely um, mixed. It's a complete artwork. So not only the, the, the fragments, it's everything. That so, so, so would it be correct to say that Givaudan support you? Yes. Okay. But do you have to make the Elaka perfumes in your own time? 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, um, I'm, I'm, a good, I'm a very good worker. I work a lot, night and day, I would say. Okay. No, I, I work on, on separate. I have some days for, for LAK, of course, but okay. um, my full day are dedicated to Gibaudan, and I work LAK, I mean, separately. Okay, we'll take questions from viewers in a few moments, but I want to bring this question up from Roxana because it's relevant. I think I know the answer, but it's worth asking the question. She's saying, as you are a Givaudan perfumer, do you only use ingredients from Givaudan in Elaka? I suppose, yeah. 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 yeah, I'm very lucky because Givaudan has a very good palette. So for a perfumer, it's like being in a Rolls Royce because, you know, I have the best ingredients, the best technology. So there is the best natural product with the best new technology to, to extract the best quality for each ingredient. And I also have captive, like maybe you heard about Akigala wood, Poma rose, or Zifuda. This Givaudan captive, I, I absolutely love and use in my fragrance. Um, so, you know, <laughs> I have the best um, palette to work with. So I didn't go to, to pick up elsewhere. So yes, all my fragrances are, are composed by, by Givaudan. Sure. I, I mix and mix, and, and I now. use the ingredients of Givaudan palette. Am I correct in saying that the two latest ones are the Kalahari and the Okavango? Yeah. So we should smell one of them and then you can tell us the story. Tell me, because I have both of them here. Which one should I spray? Yeah, okay, replace your Okavango. Okay, so I'll spray some on a blotter and you, you tell us. So this is Reflet sur, my French is terrible, Reflet sur l'Okavango, so the, so the reflection on the Okavango, yeah. right? So I'm going to spray it now. You tell us the the inspiration behind this. How you use how you base for this one? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Go on. So the Okavango is a river in in Botswana, and this river is like a tree. You know, it's it's a, it, there is a the Kavango river, and then there is like a it's like a hand because there is a delta. A, yeah, it's a, a delta. delta. Right. Okay. Because there, there is all the animal who um, come to drink and. So there is a lot of flora and, and animals there. But it was a very special moment. I was in, on the Okavango on the small Morocco. You know, this is a small trunk um, because we have to go to join her lodge, which was in the middle of the Okavango. And here, at the moment, I was looking into the water because the, the Morocco is very, very small. So I was looking into the water and I first smell the odor of honey. And then I saw an acacia reflecting into the water, but I have also my face. So I see the acacia just around my head and I have the odor. So I didn't see the acacia first. I just saw the reflection of the acacia into the water and smelled the odor, the very honey odor. So this is this suspended moment here I wanted to translate into the fragrance, but also I was in, in this Morocco. So there is a sycamore, um, there is also like um, um, uh, bamboo. There is and there is some hair that smells like play -Doh. It's very interesting. It smells like a bit like tonka beans or coumarin. It's very sweet, powdery. It smells a bit like tonka beans for those who knows coumarin nuts kind of. So it's very powdery. And in the evening, we we used to drink some amarula. Uh, the mar the marula is the liquor. So it's very sweet cream. It's a bit like a Billy's whiskey cream. <laughs> so there is this sweet nuts that make mix with the acacia. So then it's okay, woody, like the sycamores. And, and, uh, and what, what was the headspace that was used in this one? Yeah, there was the acacia. Acacia is space. The acacia headspace, okay. Yeah. Now, and shepherd tree, it's, shepherd tree is another, it's l'arbre du berger, it's another tree which looks like an acacia, it's also give yellow flower, it's also honey-like and it's a bit green, more like a hyacinth, um, like a ah. jeune um, kind of notes, so it is two head space mix. Now, this is, it, it, it's fascinating because absolutely everything that you're saying, I can smell here, yeah. but also, would it be fair to say that it has not exactly a vintage feel, but something of the feeling of some like big, big florals of the 
80s, you know, the sweet powdery thing. Is there something like that happening here, maybe? This is the concabine coumarin with the heliotrope powdery nut. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I had that, that. It's also very solar because there is this, I can say it's yellow, there is this solar nut, the solar which was reflected into the water. So this is it. In, in, in perfumery, we, we talk about salicylate. This note that smell a bit like solar cream kind of notes, and that gives this impression of, of solar. Um, and, and, and salicylates, am I right, were quite popular in some of those big perfumes of the 80s, right? I'm the thinking what? Of, yeah, also, yeah. yeah. Uh, per, I'm thinking of things, you know, from Estee Lauder, like, you know, Beautiful Est by Estee mm -hmm. Lauder, those sorts of things, those big, big Sophia Groisman mm -hmm. perfumes. That kind of thing. Oh, <laughs> that's fascinating. Right. Um, we'll we'll hopefully get a chance to smell another one. But yeah, I, d I don't I don't know if you have been pre warned Sonia. But usually on a Persilase interview, we like to play a little game. Just just very very quick games. And one of the games that I like to play is called Twenty Blotter, where I ask you twenty questions very very quickly, and you just have to give quick rapid fire answers. And the questions come in four separate categories. So for the first category, can you please give me some, can you please give me five numbers between one and nine? So I've got cards here with numbers on them. Give, choose five numbers between one and nine. Okay, three, six, nine, and one. And one more? Oh yeah, um, two. <laughs> okay, perfect. Right, so these are all questions which will take you to the past. And again, don't think about it too much. Just say the first thing that comes into your head. What was the first perfume that you ever bought for yourself? Uh, oh, it was Allure de Chanel. Ah, yeah. not bad. Okay, yeah, that's, that's still around. Good one. Can you remember who introduced you to perfume? Uh, myself, I guess. <laughs> myself, but um, I met but Jean-Pierre Léo who was a perfumer for Patou. Um, he was the first person who brings me to a perfumer office and to show me the jasmine and the rose. So it was the first perfume who really introduced me the secrets of perfumery. I could Excellent. Mm -hmm. If you could go back in time and meet your younger self, what advice would you give her? Mm. Believe in your dream and and go. Fight for your dream. Don't, don't don't listen too much what people say. Perfect <laughs> just, answer. Just believe in yourself because if you don't, no, no, nobody will believe for you. What is the first advertising campaign that you can remember? Hmm. Oh, uh, Coco. <laughs> Coco for Chanel. Oh, sorry, it's a lot of Chanel reference, but That's fine. Coco with Vanessa Paradis. In the, the little bird going. Yeah, it was, it was cute. <laughs> that was a good one. Um, who were your role models when you were growing up? My my what? Who are the people that you looked up to? Who are the people that you respected when you were growing up? I didn't have one person in particular. But my, my best friend, maybe, my best friend, um, because she was very courageous, she was a good worker, and she was a bit crazy as well. And yeah, she's, her name is Marie Alexandra. <laughs> I think everybody, was, everybody needs a friend like that. It's nice to have a friend yeah, like that. It's great. Was really, I was fascinated by her. She was so courageous, so, so beautiful as well, and intelligent. She, she had everything. <laughs> That's great. OK, five more numbers between one and ten this time. Uh, three, four, five, six, seven. <laughs> That's fine. Okay. This For this one, I need you to complete the sentences. So I'm going to give you the beginning of a sentence and you have to finish the sentence. Okay. When I go inside the perfume section of a department store, I feel... Um, I feel... Uh... I want to smell everything. <laughs> that, that's fine. I wish I wish we could bottle the smell of of love. Of love. Good one. <laughs> Next one. Modern perfumery is uh, when it's very clear. Modern perfumery is when it's very lisible. I mean, it's 
you understand what you smell very clearly. It's not confusing. It's two block or three block, and it's very understandable. Understandable. Very simple. Easy to read. Clear yeah. to read. Yeah. Okay. Next one. I wish people who buy perfume would. I wish people who buy perfume that they smell pay more attention to the middle and bottom note because the secret, the magic of fragrance is here. It's not in the top note. That not make buy the fragrance, but the best fragrance have not necessarily the best top notes. The best fragrance have the best um, trail and the best long lasting on your skin. This is for me what makes it a great I, I have to, I have to agree. Well, I agree 100%. And the last one from this section, the perfume world has lost. Uh, the perfume world has lost uh, the artistic approach, maybe the poetry. Okay, that's good. For the next section, this is a very quick one. Can you give me five more numbers again, this time between one and 12? Okay, 12, 11, 10, 8, and 5. That's it. Okay, now here, I'm going to say two things and you have to say which one you prefer. So, do you prefer the past or the future? Oh, always the future. Okay, this is, this is always a dangerous one with a French person. Do you prefer London or Paris? Ah, Paris. <laughs> okay, <laughs> do you prefer an early start in the morning or a late night? An early start. Early start. Do you prefer abstract or concrete? abstract okay and do you prefer a movie or a book a book ah okay and finally five more numbers between one and ten uh two four six eight ten <laughs> i like that <laughs> <laughs> okay and these these this is the last set of questions from this game you'll be relieved okay so what would you say to somebody who does not think that perfumery is an art? Um, I would say that, um, so say it again. So somebody says to you, I don't believe perfumery is an art. Mm -hmm. What do you say to them? Oh, no, I say there is different kind of perfumery, like there is same for clothes, for design, for everything. Uh, there, there is things that is more for larger public that it's very well done, and but it's more for most people. And there is a different perfumery who is more for more experts, but same for in design or in art. It's it's a different. We need both, but the, the two have to to leave uh, the side and the side. Yeah. At côté. Okay. Yeah. Side by side. Yeah. Excellent. Side side. Um. Does the do the words niche perfumery have any meaning anymore? Depends. <laughs> I think it depends. Uh, some brand yes, some brand no. Some fragrance yes, some fragrance no. You can find some me too in in, in niche as well. And um, yeah, so no, so it doesn't mean anything okay. anymore okay. because there is too much niche, and sometimes you don't know even who is the perfumer behind and. What he have done? Have he done a school? Which motto he have done? So because yeah. everybody can say I'm a perfumer and you know take a picture and by smelling, but everybody can do that. But become a perfumer is very long. It's you know is it care is three years and the perfumery school is again three years. It's even more five years. I was I've been trained for ten years <laughs> almost, and then you have a trainee, you're a trainee with a, a motto or it was with Christine Ajet. and so person to just arrive and say they are perfumers. Yeah. No. Yeah. And so just, I think it's important for people to do some research. So who is really a perfumer? Yeah. Should we should we treat perfumers like they are rock stars? No. Does anybody treat you like a rock star? Do you feel like you're treated no. like a rock star? No, no, no. no we, we are not treated like this by your clients. Not okay. Like um, even with my own brand, I, I don't feel I'm treated like a rock star. I think we, I, I don't need 
to be a rock star. Okay. Just like, okay. respect in what I'm doing. And I, I would love there is more transparency in who have done, who have created what. And this is the only thing which is important is respect for the creator. And you know the fragrances are written by many perfumers sometimes together. So I think it would be nice if each perfumer could have his name when it's uh, create something like a book, you know? Yeah. I, I wanted, to, we have these two questions left and I wanted to ask about that, but we'll do a sidetrack now because as I was saying at the beginning of this broadcast, there are many brands that you've created perfumes for where we are we are able, you know, it's it's public knowledge. We are able to sort of say that you made the new version of Eternity for Alvin Klein, that you with made... Olivier Gilotin. Uh, with, Again? It was not alone. It was also with Olivier Gilotin. Yes. It's, yeah. it's a creation we did together. But there are some there are some uh, there are some brands that you have made perfumes for where part of the deal, part of the agreement is that you don't talk about it. So you know, I, I respect that, and we won't talk about it now. But without mentioning the names of any brands, do you sometimes feel frustrated by that? Do you sort of think, why? Why can't we say who made it? Yeah, I I think it's like. And that's when the internet connection chooses. So somebody's. Yeah. Are you still? Yeah. Are you still there, Sonia? Yeah. So yeah it's, it's like somebody's uh, listening. I think it's happening everything in for designer, sculptor, you know, and we are in a, in a world which is not always very fair. And I think, especially for women, it's still complicated and it's more easy for men. Um, but it's not only in perfumery. I think it's in, in many. Or the yeah hard form you, yeah. you know it was charlotte perillon <laughs> she always sometimes her name was always um removed or she was or when she appears it was at at, at the end <laughs> always because she signed at, at three and there was two other men so but yeah a bit like this. yeah Let's hope, let's hope that those sorts of things, I mean, I know that things are better than they were a few years ago, but there's still a lot of, um, a lot of room for progress, I think. And it's fantastic, yeah. you know, that you, you, you are a woman who has founded a perfume brand. There are not many women still. No, who, I'm, I'm the yeah. only one from my age. And I think I'm the only one woman who have created her, her own brand, actually, as really a perfumer. I mean, who is a perfumer who have done a school and create fragrance, have prices? So I'm the yeah. only one. Yeah. No, no, and, and I'm, we, we may have questions on that. But the last two from this, uh, are, are IFRA and all of the regulations, are they harming perfumery? Uh, yes, of course. But I think, you know, when there is regulation, I always see, you know, it's, like there is two kinds of people, those who see the, the glass half empty and the other one who see the glass half full. I'm the one who look at the glass always half full. So if I have regulation, for me, this constraint, I, I, I transform it into being more creative and find something else. So it's never a problem to decrease an ingredient or remove an ingredient because it gives me the opportunity to create something really new. So I, for me, it's an opportunity to create differently, to create with new ingredients. And so I'm obliged not to go to the classical schema, you know. So yes, of course, when you want to do something classic, it's, it's complicated, you know. But we always have new ingredients, new naturals, new, new um, captive kind of notes. Yeah. Um, yeah, so for me, it's okay. It's okay. And the last one here, does perfume criticism, and by that I mean, you know, all the blogs, all the articles, YouTube, does all of that perfume criticism, does it have any value? Oh, yes, I think more and more. I think today, um, people are listening more about all the social media. Um, because there is more authenticity. Uh, people, they say what they have to say, they smell by, by themselves, they choose, choose to say if they like or if they don't like. And I think people are looking for more transparency and in everything. And I think after the COVID situation, it's even more uh, uh, 
about that. So I think it's it's important. And I discovered this with Ella K because before I, to be honest, I, I never looked at the social media media comments about my creation, you know. And, and now I'm, I'm looking, uh, and, and it's very interesting. And I realize there is fascinating people and mm. some people who smell very well and who have such a good knowledge about perfume. I'm very often fascinated by the knowledge and the, about some people, you know? <laughs> sure, sometimes yes. Sometimes more than people with, yeah, it's, it's very interesting. So uh, absolutely. I when, when, more and more attention to this, and I think it's good for the perfume, and it's good for... When, when I am, um, absolutely, when I do these live videos, I'm always so touched as well by the knowledge and the passion of the people watching, because I, mm -hmm. I've always said that I, I learn so much from the people who are watching. Yeah. Okay. At this point, I should say that you're watching uh, episode 126 of Love at First Scent with me, Persilaise, and we're very, very honored today to have in the virtual studio Sonia Constant, who is the founder and knows at Elaka and also a Givaudan perfumer. I know you've probably been patiently, patiently waiting to send in your questions, so send them now and we will get put them to Sonia. But while people are doing that, I should ask Sonia, what is the best way for people to try Alaka, for example, is there a sample set that people can order on the website, or what's the what's the best way? Yeah, we we are uh, finishing a sample set, so it's going to be uh, ready very soon. Um, the best way is yeah to, to apply all the Alaka fragrance is the kind of fragrance you have to apply on skin or on your clothes, but ready to wear with um, and, and for the long lasting. So I think. And, and you have to smell it a lot, not compare with other, because when you go in a perfumery, you always have 10 fragrances. It's not the best way to really uh, smell and discover the fragrance. Um, so I think it's wear it today and, and follow it and, 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 and leave, leave it with, with the fragrance. Yeah. And, and I know that you are available in quite a few places around the world. So yeah. I, I believe in, in like in the UK, you're in Harvey yeah. Nichols. Yeah, and we, we start in Arabs very soon. And okay. At, at the end of the month, we, we will be in Arabs too. And so in Paris, we are at Le Bon Marché. Uh, we are at Bar Liquide and Je Vois. We are also in Paravent in Lyon. And then we are in Russia, uh, to the Zoom. We, we are, we are. What about, what about in the USA? Because lots and lots of people from the US and watch these videos. Yeah, we, we, not yet, not yet. We, we are working on it, but not yet. Okay, we've got a we've got another really really good question from Roxana. Roxana is saying, I guess Sonia doesn't use focus groups with her own perfumes, but do you consult with somebody about them in the process of the creation? No, um, I choose to work alone um, because all my day um, working for clients, um, working with evaluation, or, or, or often with other perfumers sometimes. But for Elaka, as it's very deeply personal, um, I wanted to go completely to the end of the process myself. Um, but I ask some evaluation I'm very respectful and confident with. And I show them and I like to have the, um, the advertise. But at the end, I'm the only one who choose. We choose when it's finished and, and we choose the fragrance we are going to launch. Also, of course, in my Elaka team, we are a, a small team to smell. So we smell all together and we decide together. But I always have the final um, decision about the fragrance. Excellent. Mohammed is saying, what are some of your favorite ingredients to work with? Mm. Uh, I love Ambrofix. Ambrofix is a woody amber notes. <laughs> woody, ambers, woody, woody ambers are difficult. <laughs> Sorry? Woody ambers, some, some woody ambers are so strong, aren't they? Yes, but Ambrofix is not strong, it's not the, the very strong, um, hard one. It's, it's sweet. There is a lot in Baiser de Florence. There is a really huge quantity in Memory okay. Cathedral also. It, almost in all my fragrance, you have this. Um, but I also love the rose, all the flowers. The spider lily is one of my favorite flowers. Uh, Yura, or Jura, sorry, I don't know how to pronounce your name, but maybe Yura, which perfumers from the past or the present do you most admire or are you most inspired by? Hmm. Uh, 
I love the work of Jean-Claude Elena. I think Théa Dermès' Déclaration de Quartier was really beautiful fragrance, very well done, very respectful about his work uh, with a lot of elegance. And, and I love also the work of my sister-in-law, Christine Najek, who <laughs> continues the house. Okay, <laughs> so Sonia, I have, to, I, have to, I have to interrupt you there for a second because just for people watching, yes, you heard that right. Sonia's sister-in-law is Christine Nagel. <laughs> but you were saying, right, you love yes. her work. And, and she creates uh, for her, for Narciso Rodriguez, which is a beautiful fragrance. And I was very lucky to, to, to continue the story of for her, uh, after her. And uh, well, lots of respect also for, for her perfumery. When you, when you meet Christine, yeah. is it, is, what is that like? <laughs> Actually, it's strange because the first time I met Christine, I was at the Izipka and uh, because I was looking for an uh, internship, you know, so, and she was at Quest at, at, the, at that time because then Jebedon bought Quest. But so I have, um, but it was before I get married. So the first time I met her, I, I didn't even know his brother. <laughs> and then when I met his brother, because he said, you don't have the same name, my brother, my husband's name is Gagliardi, and her name is Najel because she kept the name of her, her first husband. And so they don't have the same name. So I didn't know, and my husband didn't tell me. <laughs> she was her sister. So I didn't know, and, and they don't look the same. So it was funny, because one day he told me that, I said, oh my God, but really, why didn't you tell me before? <laughs> so it was quite funny. I know I know at the moment it wouldn't be possible because of course Christine Nagel is in house perfumer at Hermès yeah. but yeah. one day one day would you love to make a perfume with her Oh yes yes of course yes We okay. worked together because she was my mentor you know Christine before to go to Hermès she was at Givaudan and she arrived at Givaudan exactly at the time when I was leaving the perfumery school and she was looking for um, a, a trainee perfumer because she always loved to train a perfumer and, and me, the, the process at Gibaudon when you finish the perfumery school is to join the perfumer team, but you start as a trainee with a mentor of perfumer. And so, and, and people didn't know we were <laughs> married with, uh, with a little brother. It was very strange. But so she, she teach me the perfumery for two years, then I, I become pregnant. <laughs> That's so, amazing. Yeah. Now Sonia, I have to ask you a question. I have to ask you this maybe slightly difficult, maybe slightly controversial question, because I'm sure you were, you're aware, I'm sure it's the same in France. This, this is, at the moment, we seem to be in a very, very politically sensitive time uh, we, we, and culturally sensitive time. So do, do you worry in any way that, you know, all of these perfumes, most of these perfumes have been inspired by, and again, we have to be careful with this word, by exotic locations. So you have, you know, Kalahari, you have Pushkar, mm -hmm. you have uh, Japanese locations. Yeah. Do you ever worry that this is, a, this is a case of, you know, the white European person going around the world, mm -hmm. saying what these different places smell like? Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on that? Um, not sure I understand the question. Well, because I suppose some people would say, why is why is another white European perfumer telling us about the smell of Africa, the smell of Japan? Why doesn't she just stick to Europe and let us talk about Africa and Japan and America? Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, of course, because for me it's 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 exotic, and Africa is also meaning with my uh, roots of my grandfather who was traveling there, and yeah, it's because for me it's it's some place where I can find different things. Uh, that I don't have here in, in, in Paris. So for me, it's more inspiring than staying here in, in Paris, where there is not so many things that smell already. So yes, going in India to create Pushka. Yeah, for, for me, I love to discover a new smell, to discover a new atmosphere. And also with the travel, for me, it's also a moment where, where you feel free because you're not busy with all your work or everything you have to do in your day. So this moment, this is very suspended moment when your head is completely uh, empty. This is here when the inspiration comes. Um, it, it, because 
you're out of your office. You're, it's a very special moment. I love this moment. Because we say, I don't know in English, the world has a horror of the The universe hates uh, emptiness. So if you create the emptiness, the inspiration comes, but, but a bigger inspiration, really something very special. So for me, traveling is also correspond to a moment, a suspended moment, where I'm extracted from my, my routine here, you know? And, and so it's not only the place, new place to discover, it's also the process during traveling. And I, I like slow traveling because you really feel the place, feel the people, feel the culture. So it's a, it's a complete process. Okay, no, thank you for that. And it's really something that, because it's true that what you say that, of course, this destination is, but it's more marketing very often. <laughs> Those people or the perfume have been really there. No, not, not necessarily. Sometimes just the name of Bali because it makes people dreaming. In, in Elaka, I've been there in, I've been every, here in every place. It's absolutely authentic. Uh, this is, I think, the difference. Okay. Interesting question from EcoJog. How do you distinguish between masculine and feminine? Or maybe you don't. No, I, I hate to be, for me, the perfume is a gender fluidity since the beginning. And in LRK, we don't gender fragrance. So, of course, some fragrances are more feminine and some other are more masculine. But I'm very surprised sometimes when you don't gender a fragrance and you, if one is for me more feminine, like Chris Uralong for me is more feminine, but if you don't tell this to a man, he loves Chris Uralong because he will find his way as a man and the other way around is also correct. So I don't like to gender. So for, for, so for you, more woody, more spicy, it's more masculine. And when it's okay. more floral, it's more feminine. If it's more sweet, it's more feminine. But what does that mean today? You know, if you look if also with clothes, design, I think the gender fluidity is everywhere. Um, I think it's an old concept. Okay. Gender. Let's, let's finish with this. I like this question from Eric to finish. Do you wear any perfume on your days off? Mm. Actually, I'm always wearing my creation. <laughs> okay. So, and it's very often, so it's often the, the next Elaka I'm, I'm going to launch, but it's also every day, it's more what I'm working on right now. So it's this evening, I will wear what I was working on today. And I will write a triad that I like today, especially. I can't wear all my projects because I'm working on 10 projects every day, but there is one, you know, that give you more sh shiver. So I, I will wear this one. And also to see if people give me, um, you know, um, say it's good, not good, uh, say yeah. something about the presence. Excellent. Okay. Sonia, thank you very, very much for your time. And all of you watching and all of you listening, thank you so much for your questions. Uh, I, my final question to you is, when the world sooner or later goes back to normal in some way, where is the next place that you would love to travel to? Oh, I love to travel to South of um, America. So Brazil, I've been to Brazil, but um, uh, yeah, I think I would come back to, to Brazil or yeah. Brazil. Yeah, yeah. That, that's that's a nice dream to have. Okay, thank you so much, everybody, for watching. Thank you, uh, thank you, Sonia, for being such a great guest. As as always with these interviews, Sonia did not know what questions were coming up. You know, she genuinely just sort of went along with the questions as they came up. Lots and lots of people are saying so. Ali is saying that he's only turned up now. Never mind. You can watch the recording. Cole is saying thank you. Uh, Chang is saying merci. Miguel says, gracias, so thank you all of you, but particularly thanks very much to Sonia, and all of you, take care, look after yourselves, be good, and we will see you soon on YouTube.